we're going to go ahead and get started. Okay. Good morning. In compliance with notification requirements of Ohio's open meeting law and section 101.021 of the Codified Ordinance of Cleveland, Ohio, 1976, notice of this meeting has been publicly posted. All boards and commissions under the purview of the city planning department conducts its meetings according to Robert's rules of order. Actions during the meeting will be taken by voice vote. Abstentions from any vote due to a conflict of interest should be stated for the record prior to the taking of any vote. In order to ensure that everyone participating in the meetings has the opportunity to be heard, we ask that you use the raise hand feature before asking a question or making a comment. The raise hand feature can be found in the participants panel on the desktop and mobile version and activated by clicking the hand icon. Please wait for the chair or facilitator to recognize you and be sure to select unmute and announce yourself before you speak. When finished speaking, please lower your hand by clicking on the raise hand icon again and mute your microphone. We will also be utilizing the chat feature to communicate with participants. The chat feature can be activated by clicking the chat button located on the bottom of the WebEx screen. Call in users can unmute by using star six. All meeting activity is being recorded via the WebEx platform. These proceedings are also being live streamed via YouTube. All requests to speak on a particular matter via our website and email have been considered. We have also received emails from those who have provided written comment on a particular matter. Madam Chair, the meeting is yours. Um, thank you. Good morning, everyone. And uh, let's take the roll. Bowen. Downing. Present. Luker. Curry. Present. McCray Scott. Present. Paul. Slife. Present. Madam Chair, we have a quorum. Uh, thank you. Um, today, just for all the, the people who will be speaking um, and throughout the design review items, I'm going to ask that people move efficiently through their presentations today and really focus on those items that are relevant uh, to the city planning commission. Um, so exterior, those, those issues that may have been raised by design review um, as items that uh, required further consideration. Um, so that we can move efficiently through the agenda today. So please try to stay brief as we get through this very um, long agenda. So first item is a special presentation. Uh, Northeast 2021031 Five Point Streetscape Mural. It's seeking final approval. Uh, and is Crystal Sierra here to speak about this? She yeah. is. Okay. Can I ask um, for these items? Uh, I'm not required to swear anyone in for the items, these items, correct? Are these I, review items? Correct. Michael? Correct. Okay. Yeah, no, we we do not swear in anyone for these uh, sorts of um, projects. Okay. Thank you. I just wanted to confirm. So let so, me uh, introduce this. Um, this was uh, approved by Northeast Design Review last week um, based on a condition from a previously tabled uh, uh, result. And they have made those adjustments since then. It's also had a, a high level of community engagement and the mural is actually part of a larger streetscape project. This is in Ward 10 in Collinwood. Um, I support the project and the level of engagement and I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Crystal to go over the details. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Crystal Sierra here from Greater Collinwood presenting the Five Point Streetscape uh, mural today. Uh, next slide, please. The Five Point Streetscape project aims to implement the recommendations of the 2018 St. Clair Corridor study conducted by City Planning Commission uh, with support from Councilman Anthony Harrison and Councilman Michael Polonzik. Funded by the Cuyahoga County Community Development Supplemental Grant, the Five Point Streetscape Project Phase 1 is a $50,000 investment by way of GCDCR organization and includes the installation of public art, uh, bike racks, placemaking banners, crosswalk restriping, and vegetation control. 
Through placemaking, public art, and beautification, the project aims to elevate and preserve the Five Points identity uh, while also encouraging motorists and visitors to slow down and explore rather than drive through. Next slide, please. In December 2019 and December through January 2021, GCDC hosted a series of public meetings to announce its intent to submit a proposal to Cuyahoga County uh, for the Community Development Supplemental Grant for grant years 2020 and 2021. Greening public art identity, code enforcement, and spaces for youth and community engagement were all topics of priority for the intersection. Each of the four public meetings uh, was preceded by a notice of public meeting issued seven days prior. Next uh, slide, please. GCDC established a committee of five community members, business owners, and stakeholders from wards eight and 10 um, in June 2020 to review and score submissions uh, for banner design and public art as part of the project. That committee helped to guide scoring criteria uh, for the de design selection. Um, artist Aaron Williams was chosen for the five points public art mural and for the banner design. Next slide, please. So this slide um, contains uh, Aaron Williams portfolio. His recent collaborations include the Black Lives Matter mural with Graffiti Heart at 93rd and Bessemer, the Green Palette project with Waterloo Arts on Waterloo Road, Inside Out with Contrast High Pop Life and Culture Jock at Waterloo. Um, he recently had a solo show at the Museum of Contemporary Art that ran through August 15th. Next slide, please. Um, so the five points public art mural will be installed at um, 14820 St. Clair Avenue. Um, it's to be painted on the east facing facade of the building. Uh, the wall will be power washed prior to installation to give a smooth surface. Um, and um, the, the artist is going to make use of the existing texture by using a stain um, as backdrop. Next slide, please. Um, so the dimensions of this wall is 15 foot by 66 uh, feet. Uh, aerosol and outdoor like latex paint will be used. Uh, Anti-graffiti coating will be applied at the time of installation. And then these two images to the right provide um, some contextual views. At the top, this is the east facing wall. And then at the bottom, the little red indicator is where that location is in relation to the five points intersection. Next slide, please. These are a couple more contextual photos. On the left, that is a um, southwest facing view of the building. And then on the right, um, that is a, um, I'm sorry, the, the photo on the left is an east southeast facing image. And the photo on the right is a west facing image from St. Clair. Next slide, please. So this is the um, concept for the mural. Um, it's an artistic rendering of Aaron's um, hands with an excerpt from On the Pulse of the Morning by Maya Angelou. The open hand or five hand gesture is a reference to the five points intersection and extends to the top of the building to express that the sky is the limit. A fist represents self love and strength. And then the Maya Angelou um, quotation was actually um, recited at two presidential inaugurations. Next slide, please. And that concludes the presentation um, for the five points mural on it. Um, uh, East 152nd and St. Clair Avenue. Thank you. Mission members, any questions? I move approval, Downing. Second. We have a motion and a second. Um, can we take the roll, please? Downing. Yes. Curry. Yes. Trey Scott. Yes. Sly. Yes. Uh, thank you. Motion carries. It's a beautiful mural. I um, actually really like it a lot. and. I uh, love the design. So thank you very much for the thoughtful presentation. Uh, next item. 
this next project, uh, Life is Sharing the Same Park Bench Mural and many park enhancements. I'm very excited to introduce um, this particular mural at East Ninth and Rockwell um, was commissioned by uh, former mayor Carl Stokes, who we all know is the first uh, African-American uh, elected mayor in a major city. Um, back in 1969, he commissioned John Francis Morrell for this mural. It was approved at uh, with conditions at the Downtown Flats Design Review on August 19th. Um, the condition was with regard to um, the park space, not the mural itself. Um, and uh, I believe this is the oldest mural in Cleveland or one of the oldest. Um, it was uh, refurbished back in 1993. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this over to Greg Peckham from Land Studio to give you more particulars. Thank you. Hi, good morning. Um, that's a great, a great summary to, to get us started. And I just want to point out um, that the um, the approval that we're seeking is actually for the improvements to the to the small park space in front. Um, I'll talk a, a little bit about the mural because that's sort of the catalyst for for the project. Um, this is um, we at Land Studio are having our our tenth anniversary as an organization. So we um, identified a handful of projects and collaborations with different artists that we wanted to. Uh, to do to really sort of thank folks in Cleveland for their support of of our work for uh, for the last 10 years. Um, and so this is one of the projects that, that we identified as part of that. Um, just to give you a little uh, sense of the location, it's on East 9th Street at the corner of Rockwell. Um, you can go to the next slide, please. Um, this is a street level view. Uh, there's a hotel on the left and there's the mural as it is today on the right hand side with a small um, very small sort of mini park right in right in front of, of the mural space. Go ahead to the next slide. Um, so the the mini park or this pocket park is owned by the city of Cleveland um, and the wall uh, where the mural sits is actually a, a privately owned building um, with the uh, owned by the Bischoff company um, and they have been very supportive of this project so far. You can go to the next slide. Um, John Morrell, this is um, some images of work that he has done um, across the city, um, largely in the in the 60s and 70s. He was sort of a prolific artist and a lot of his work dealt with um, issues of uh, social justice and inclusion and tolerance um, and these types of things. And this piece um, is probably one of um, if not the only re, uh, remaining piece um, in Cleveland. And so we've we've had a wonderful time um, getting to know his family. He passed away uh, a number of years ago. The majority of his family is in upstate New York um, and they have shared with us his uh, his entire archive. And you see some images of other works that were done um, around Cleveland over the years. Um, so we're they are very excited about, um, you know, kind of honoring him and this this artwork and bringing it back. You can go to the next slide. Um, just a little bit more from from their archive. Uh, this is the original press release, which uh, which talks about it. But you get a sense of, um, you know, this was a, as as Tara said, this was one of the the earliest large scale uh, downtown murals in Cleveland, and it had a lot of sort of hype at the at the time. You can go to the next slide. Um, just pulled out a couple important um, you know pieces about this that, as as Tara said, um, that this was really dedicated. Um, to uh, to the mayor and his commitment to this idea of brotherhood within Cleveland. Um, and there's a few quotes about it, you know, um, features uh, 20, 26 foot figures on a park bench, an elderly man, a, a, a middle aged man, a Negro. Of course, this is a, you know, a moment in time uh, and a woman holding a baby and the left end of the, the bench is vacant, um, presumably for um, inviting people to, to sit there as well. Um, and the quote from the mayor on the right hand side says this mural will be a symbol of what we want the city to be about uh, and that is brotherhood and we thought that this was a really um, you know you know unfortunately the message is as timely today as it was back in 1969 so we thought it's appropriate to uh, to bring it back to life you can go to the next slide um, also as as Tara mentioned that it in the early 90s there was a plan to uh, replace the mural to paint it over um, and that was met with a huge amount, uh, as we can understand it, of, of objection uh, to losing this sort of iconic part of the, the cityscape. So it was um, it was 
the last time it was touched was 1993. So you see the second mayor there um, after Mayor Stokes, Mayor White, um, sort of rededicating the mural um, again with the artists in, in 1993. If you can go to the next slide. Um, so this is the the mural as it is today in the small park in front. It has um, a couple of the rock halls, rock boxes um, that play music every hour on the hour. Um, but it's really kind of a, a bit of a leftover space. You can go ahead to the next image. Um, this one sort of just zooms in to give you a sense of the condition. Um, you know, this it's it still looks okay, um, but I think that we are sort of at risk of this kind of really starting to deteriorate faster. So in addition to repainting it, we will also be dealing with some sort of some of the sort of structural needs of the uh, of the piece itself. You can go to the next slide. Um, we have um, engaged Alan Guyberson, who is a, a local uh, Cleveland artist and a sign painter. Um, you've probably seen some of his his work around the city. Um, in the top right is uh, uh, Love Loons over Buckeye. Um, some other uh, images of his work. He's, I think, one of the you know, great young people who's keeping the the craft of hand painted signs um, alive in Cleveland. So we're excited to work with him and sort of, um, you know, have him kind of bring this back to its original uh, condition. You can go to the next slide. Um, so this is the the part that is really of you know, kind of in interest to this group. Um, these are what we're planning in terms of the enhancements to the uh, to the park space in front of the mural. Go ahead to the next slide. Um, this is just a quick streetscape view. And just as a point of reference, um, Jim McKnight from the Mayor's Office of Capital Projects, um, we've been working closely with him as well as Commissioner DeRosa um, to kind of pull the pieces of this project together. So the work that you're going to see here is prepared by, uh, by Jim McKnight in, at the city. So you can go to the next slide. Um, the irony of irony in front of the park bench mural, there are no park benches. Um, there was when it was done originally, these little notches cut out that had park benches, they were removed at some point. Um, so our plan, you can go to the next slide, is to bring those back. Um, so we, there's a, a small gravel area on the left of the screen. We're gonna be installing a new uh, picnic table. There'll be four backless benches that we'll show you in a second um, along the site, um, allowing people to look at look at the mural or sit at the streetscape with the mural behind them, um, a little bit of ground cover and a, and a handful of, of new trees. Um, so we're just you know, really kind of refreshing this space. You can go to the next image, please. Um, this was the original plan that, uh, that Jim put back together. Um, as, as Tara mentioned, um, the uh, design review committee, the one major comment that they had is they wanted to see sort of uh, the ability to sort of access the site um, from, from more than one place. So, if you go to the next slide, there was the space that they said, you know, it might be nice um, to allow people to pass through this, this area. Um, you can go to the next slide. So Jim McKnight updated the plan as you see it here um, to allow for, um, for people to come in and out. We're not doing any sort of uh, pathways or anything. This is a very small space. You know, people come in and they you know, might have lunch or have a cup of coffee or walk their dog through, but um, it really doesn't need uh, much more than, than sort of these basic amenities that we're adding to it. So you can go to the next slide. Uh, and the, this is the, uh, the furniture collection that, that Jim has picked out for the project. Some very, very simple modern um, uh, site furnishings. These are the benches and uh, the picnic table that's that's going to be there. Um, and that's it. So we're really just trying to kind of create a, a bit of a, um, you know, a space out of a, a leftover little corner. Um, but I think it, uh, the combination of the landscaping, the site amenities and the restoration of the mural um, should make a nice uh, improvement to that corner and really, I think, celebrate that artwork that has uh, you know, been such an important part of the cityscape for so long and bring it back um, and refresh it. So our hope is to start the project in mid-September um, and finish it uh, for a kind of celebration and rededication of the mural on the 9th of October. Um, both, as I mentioned, the mayor, uh, the mayor's family, as well as the family of the artists have been um, engaged and in, in, in conversation with us uh, about this project for the last several months. So that's all I have. Thank you. Um, thank you, commission members. Any questions or comments? Uh, this is Diane. Um, as a special assignment, I was in charge of bringing um, the mural back to life in 1993. Uh, and actually, 
the artist when I worked for Mayor White and the artist uh, John Morrell was alive at that time and we were able to bring him in for the first rededication. So um, I didn't realize, I didn't remember what year, uh, but I'm so glad that um, it's being restored again. So um, I would like to move approval uh, as another part of history is restored in Cleveland. Thank you. And I, Thank you. And I second. You have a motion and a second. Any other comments? Um, okay, let's take the roll. Downing. Yes. Hurry. Yes. Ray Scott. Yes. Life. Yes. Uh, thank you. Motion carries. Um, and I agree with Diane. This is wonderful. So thank you. Thank, thank you, you guys. Have a, have a great long weekend, everybody. Okay. Uh, just as a point of note going forward, and this is to Freddie and his team, um, I think these items that are not city murals, but they are park projects or even murals that are in design review districts technically do belong at the end of the agenda because they go to local design review and they also have outside presenters who should be sworn in. So I'm going to suggest that this be revisited, um, not for today, but going forward. Um, that these items belong in the design review section going forward, unless they're city projects, which these are not, um, and uh, and they should be sworn in. Um, so if someone can explore that from the planning commission side, I'd appreciate it. Um, so thank you. Um, and then the next item is special presentation, um, Old Brooklyn Blooms Mural Project 2021-029. Uh, and this is at 4377 State Road. Um, and I think we have two people here to speak to this. Yes, um, there's actually three locations for this project. Oh, it's yeah. a, a neighborhood wide project. And yeah. um, it was approved uh, at Near West Design Review on August 25th. Um, both artists are uh, local artists, uh, Eileen Dorsey and Garrett Wider. Um, both of them have done other work around the city. Um, the one uh, location the design review committee had uh, wanted the mural to be painted on panels instead of directly on the brick facade because of some transom windows that um, are on the building. And so um, I'm in support of this project as well. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Eileen and um, uh, Garrett. And this is in um, wards uh, 13 and 12. Thank you. Hello, um, thank you, Tara. Um, hello, everyone, and thank you for uh, having us today. Um, so we are presenting three murals in the Old Brooklyn neighborhood, and the concept is to uh, solidify the branding of the neighborhood, which is a great place to grow. And so we're gonna be presenting um, organic uh, flower murals for the, uh, to put in the neighborhood to not only, um, create a more beautiful place in a welcoming uh, space for the neighborhood, but to solidify the branding. Um, uh, next slide, please. Um, and so, yeah, so basically it, it goes along with that concept and the, the murals will be flowers growing and they are not only going to uh, solidify the branding, but create a almost uh, a reason for uh, passerbys to stop and maybe take a photo opportunity and while they're there support the local businesses and each of the murals are approximately 11 by uh, 9 feet uh, either vertical or horizontal uh, next slide please we've included some of our own work um, like uh, Tara said we will be collaborating and these are actually my works um, as you can see, I, uh, I specialize in uh, landscape oriented works, lots of trees, lots of plants, and you can see examples of that here. Next slide, please. And Garrett Wider uh, also has been working with uh, several other neighborhoods and making creating murals around town. He currently is working on 
um, a very large scale 200 plus wide foot um, uh, mural in on the Puritist wall in um, uh, off of like Puritist and off first, I think. Uh, next slide, please. And here's a location for um, uh, the State Road. You can see where uh, the street view and where the, uh, we've um, used the red to indicate the portion of the wall that we're using. Uh, next slide, please. And here's another street view so you can see how um, people will be viewing it. Next slide, please. And this will just give you a better idea where it's located in the city. Next slide, please. And this is the our artistic rendering. We've in, uh, so we're using the uh, branding colors for the business. This is on Gus's, and their brand colors are orange, black, and like a uh, like a like an almond color. So we've incorporated all those in that and we will be doing that for each of the businesses. We're keeping that in mind. And um, next slide, please. And this is the second location, which is um, where it's on Broadview Avenue. We are actually painting over an um, existing sign and you can see where it's located. Next slide, please. And another street view of this Broadview location. Next slide, please. And you can see where it's located on the map. Next slide, please. And this is the rendering. So the business, or the business that is located there, is a cigar um, shop, and we've taken tobacco leaves and tobacco flowers and used it in this rendering uh, so we were helping so we were still continuing with the uh, a great place to grow and the flower theme but we're also incorporating something that's personal to the business okay and the next slide please this is our third location uh Stanford Ave, I believe. Uh, the, this is located next to the Six City Cycle, which is a bicycle and plant shop. And I'm mentioning that because the design is relevant. Uh, next slide, please. And you can see at the corner uh, in the windows is the um, Six City uh, Cycle, which you can see the wall is located in the red in the background. Next slide, please. And this is where you could view it um, from the main, I, it's Pearl, I believe. So you could see that it's going to be visible on the side from the main uh, street. Next slide, please. And here's the rendering. So we wanted to, uh, we, we wanted to keep with like something that's photogenic, people could take pictures with. But we are definitely keeping in mind the businesses that are around there. So we we use the, the blue background to already go with the um, the wall, and we use um, something more botanical so it matches or kind of um, solidifies the branding for that specific corner. So, and I I believe that's the last slide. Okay. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. Um, commission members, uh, any questions or comments? And then I need to ask, do we need three motions or one for this? Did Michael? Uh, I think one would be sufficient, honestly. Okay. I'll, I'll move approval. Downing. Second. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Any other comments? Um, I think these are beautiful, by the way. Very, very beautiful. And love the color um, alignment a lot. So thank you. Um, let's call the roll. Downing. Yes. Curry. Yes. McCray Scott. Yes. Life. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um,
So we're moving on. I don't think we have any zoning map amendments. Uh, no townhouse, no lot splits, which is unusual. Uh, so mandatory referrals. Um, this is ordinance number 684-2021, authorizing the director of capital projects to issue one or more permits to Muldoon's to encroach upon the public right of way of East 185th Street. Uh, is there someone from the city to speak to this? Uh, good morning, Rick Swatowski, uh, manager, engineering construction. Okay. Thank you. The, this encroachment per, uh, request is from Muldoon's restaurant in order to maintain existing asphalt pavement, fence, brick wall, and building canopies uh, that of their restaurant. Uh, we need to get this uh, encroachment done as we're coming up with the East 185th Street project starting uh, in the near future. And we have to make sure the right of way is free of all, um, all, all, all things that aren't, what's the right word? Can't have encroach, you have to have encroachments to be in the right of way. So we need to have this taken care of. Okay. Um, is uh, this the, the drying? Right, here. that you can see the shaded area. That's where the is actually on both sides of Mazina Drive along 185th. Right, they've encroached into the right of way over years, so we have to make sure we clear the right of way of all obstacles that are there that, that aren't part of the right of way. And the way to do that, this situation is through an encroachment. Okay, um, mission members, I'm chair, got a question real quick. Yep. Would that impact the uh, amount of like sidewalk space, Rick? Or no, uh, space at all? Director, nothing's changed than what's out than what is out there currently. Okay. What you see now is what is there, and all this does is make it legal. But there is, I think, the question Freddie's asking is there still the minimum requirement that is clear from the remaining sidewalk? That's correct. Yes, it is. Okay. I'll move approval. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any further questions? Um, okay, uh, let's take the roll. Downing. Yes. Curry. Yes. Ray Scott. Yes. Slife. Yes. Motion carries. Uh, thank you, Rick. Uh, next item. I have one more. Okay, you're welcome. To stay for as many as you have. So, uh, <laughs> if you can go back, uh, resolution 693-2021, uh, declaring a portion or the intent of to vacate a portion of Rawlings Avenue between 75th Street and 79th Street, a portion of Holton Avenue between 75th Street and 79th Street, and a portion of 78th Street from the south side line of Holton Avenue uh, to the south lines of Sublot. 84 and 75. I'm sure you'll explain all this to us. Yes, as we go through the slides, it become clearer. Uh, the Department of Economic Development has been engaged in the acquisition and assembly of property in and around Opportunity Corridor in order to make property available for future development. Various independent parcels will need to be consolidated and certain streets need to be vacated. If we can go to the, to the uh, next slide, please. You can see the area that's being vacated. This is actually is all is meant for the use for the construction of the cold storage unit that um, Orlando will be putting in. But I think it's going to be the largest uh, east of the Mississippi. Yes. So this area is where they will be building it, and I think they're breaking ground uh, by the, before the end of the year. Okay. And uh, Madam Chair, too, this is the uh, area, too, that we uh, rezone for the purpose of this facility. We also made sure that all of the parcels along 79th to the east of the cold storage facility remain open for community and neighborhood development to ensure that 79th Street remains walkable. Okay. Commission members, any questions? I'll move. Approval. We have two second. motions. And second. A second. <laughs> Motion by, by by Diane and second by Councilman Slife. Um, any further questions? Okay, let's take the roll. 
Downing. Yes. Curry. Yes. Gray Scott. Yes. Slife. Yes. Uh, motion carries. Uh, next item. Thank you. Have a nice weekend. Thank you, Rick. Have a nice holiday. Thank um, you. Same to you. Mandatory referrals ordinance number 695-2021, authorizing the mayor and the commissioner of purchases, purchases and supplies to acquire and reconvey properties presently owned by Fairfax Renaissance Development Corporation on the west side of East 105th Street for the purpose of entering into chain of title before uh, TIF financing legislation. Someone here from ED? Yep, good morning. So. Oh, hi, this ordinance authorizes uh, this uh, entering into the chain of title in order to implement a non-school TIF um, to support the Innovation Square project. Um, the project's uh, first phase will be about 80 units, um, a mix of market rate and workforce housing, um, complements the neighboring development of um, a grocery store as part of a mixed-use project there at uh, 105th Street and Cedar. And so, uh, as part of um, the financing for the project, the city's off uh, providing a non-school TIF. We'll be providing a loan for the project as well. Okay. Any further questions? A motion. I move approval. Downing. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, we take the roll. Downing. Yeah. Curry. Yes. McCray Scott. Yes. Slife. Yes. Motion carries. Uh, thank you, uh, Director. Uh, next item is mandatory referrals ordinance number 696-2021, authorizing the mayor and commissioner of purchases and supplies to acquire and reconvey property presently owned by the Levin Group um, for the Blanket Mills project. Um, uh, for the purpose of entering into chain of title. Um, so I do have to pause here. Um, I think the Cleveland Foundation is involved in this project. So um, uh, we ha have been looking at a potential um, loan. So I need to ask, sh should uh, Diane maybe chair this portion and I will uh, abstain. Diane, are you okay with that? I'm fine with that. Um, who do we have uh, speaking to this item? Um, me again. I got this one and the next one too. So, okay. um, I get same same type of ordinance. This will authorize entering into the chain of titles precedent to a non-school TIF. Um, the redevelopment of the Blanket Mills building is a mixed-use uh, project, thirty-five thousand square foot of commercial space, um, which the Centers for Family and Children will occupy. Um, as well as 60 affordable housing units, um, mix of one, two, and three bedrooms. Um, the city's providing a uh, non-school TIF to support the project, as well as a loan um, to get this project moving. Um, exciting project and happy to support it. Okay, any questions from commission members? Move approval. Thank you. Do I have a second? A second. Okay, would you call the roll? Downing. Yes. I have Commissioner Curry as abstaining. Uh, McCray Scott. Yes. Slight. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Next item. I think you should take this one as well. The similar. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, ordinance number 697 2021 14, Council Member Santana, authorizing the mayor and the commissioner of purchases and supplies to acquire and reconvey properties presently owned by Northeast Ohio Hispanic Center for Economic Development or its designee, located in the West 25th Street and Clark Avenue area. For the purpose of entering into the chain of title prior to the adop adoption of tax increment financing legislation 
authorized under section 5709.41 of the revised code of for the Centro Centrovia 25 project. Great. David, are you here to speak to I this? I am. Okay, please um, go ahead. Thank you. Um, again, same same thing. This authorizes us to uh, enter into the chain of title prior to implementing a non-school TIF. Um, the project here is a, a really innovative project focused on um, uh, development of the uh, um, area there around West 25th Street and Clark with um, a business focus on the um, uh, Cleveland Hispanic community, Hispanic Business Center taking the lead on this really. Um, a mix of uh, retail kiosks, uh, commercial kitchen, um, small grocery space, um, gathering space, as well as uh, offices for um, Metro West and the Hispanic Business Center. Uh, the city is providing a non-school TIF to support the project, as well as some additional um, loan and grants um, for the project. I've uh, been working on this one for a while and glad to see it's moving forward. Any questions from commission members? Can I have a motion? Move approval. Second. I second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Call the roll, please. Downing. Yes. Curry. Abstain. Trey Scott. Yes. Slay. Yes. Motion is approved. Thank you. Next Thank item. You. Um, uh, okay. Thank you. I'm good now. Thank you very much. Um, right. Wait, uh, we are taking this one. I understand. Um, and uh, there isn't someone to speak to it, but it's pretty straightforward. This is ordinance number 713-2021. Uh, this is ordinance to change the name of the Ken Johnson Recreation Center to the Woodland Recreation Center. Any questions? Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any other questions? Yeah, Call I the do roll. want to make a comment, uh, uh, Madam Chair, if I may. Uh, sure. Uh, unfortunate uh, circumstance and proposal, um, but I know um, the uh, impetus behind this, and um, I know this is a. Uh, a tough one, you know, for uh, someone who served for uh, many years, um, and it's unfortunate uh, the outcome uh, of that uh, individual's career. I think there was a lot of good uh, that was done, and also know that you know uh, situations happen, and um, this is unfortunate, but uh, I understand necessary. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's call the roll. Downing. Sorry, Diane. Yes. Hurry. Yes. McCray Scott. Yes. Slife. Yes. Uh, administrative approvals. Um, if you could um, maybe just uh, go through these slowly, we can take a look at them. Wait, can I see the last one? Okay, recognition center. Okay. Um, any questions about any of the administrative approvals? I move approval. Downing. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? I'll second. Motion and a second. Uh, let's uh, take the roll. Downing. Yes. Hurry. Yes. Ray Scott. Yes. Life. Yes. Okay, um, and we're going to move into design review. So I'll need to swear in the applicants for these items. Um, also, going to ask the applicants um, to 
to please uh, try to keep the presentation succinct and focused on the exterior, the parking, the landscaping, the things that are the purview of this commission, and especially the items that may have been uh, uh, put into the motions of the design review. Um, if you could go back, I just need to read the title of this one. Um, this is uh, F uh, uh, 2021-020. Cam's Corner Medical Building Renovation and Addition, seeking final approval. Um, and uh, anyone speaking to this, if you could um, uh, raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, as you shall answer to the penalty of perjury? I do. Okay. It's all yours. Hi. Uh, this is Gary Fisher with Fisher & Associates Architects. Um, I see that Sam is on. I I see he's still muted, so we may want to have him. That's the owner of the building. Yes. Um, okay. So Sam. Yes, here. I no. Okay. Hi guys. Um, so this uh, is an existing property. There's an existing one-story medical building on this site. Very low ceilinged interior buildings and in, uh, has been abandoned for a few years. Uh, and the proposal is to uh, basically redo the entire building, add two floors to it. Uh, there will be three apartments on the second floor, and then the top floor will be um, uh, a pool area for the owners. The owners will actually live in the building. We'll have a, a large apartment on the second floor, as well as there are two separate rental apartments up there. The first floor will be returned to medical offices. Um, <clears throat> the parking lot remains the same. Um, Exterior of the building will be some Nichiha materials. We can move to the slides of the elevations if you want to get to those. Continue down. Thank you. There's uh, the uh, Lorraine Road elevation is at the top of the sheet. The uh, west elevation, sorry about that. The west elevation is at the bottom of the sheet, if you want to go to the next slide. And then we can look at some renderings. I think that will portray it better. Uh, this is the elevation to the north, and the elevation to the east is at the bottom of the sheet. You want to move uh, through these and go to the next slide. This is actually just a site plan showing some of the existing conditions. There are some Street trees were um, proposing, excuse me, some simple lawns out in front uh, with some low shrubs at the entrances. The, there are entrances and glass along the Lorraine Road side. However, the entrances to the actual offices will be at the rear of the building, as will the entrances to the um, apartments. Next slide. So this is the massing of the building. We have a, a, a stacked stone on the lower portion. The second floor then, which is the residential floor, actually overhangs the front of the building by about three feet. Um, and then it has a lighter stone material. And then the top floor goes back to more of a, and, and I'm sorry, this turned out a little green on the image. It's a little more charcoal colored. Um, and that is actually the pool house up on the roof. Go to an, another slide to change views if you'd like. That is street view. You can see a little bit of the overhang and the two balconies out there. Right now, the offices on the first floor, if you'd go back, there we go. Uh, the offices, there we go, perfect. The offices along the first floor are not currently rented. However, they are getting requests for it. Um, we've been working with uh, Sam and his family for about two years to uh, get this project moving. Obviously, COVID and pricing has been kind of an issue, but uh, we're through those hurdles and they're ready to get started on this project. And I will be happy to answer any questions. These are some street views. Uh, this is looking to the east, looking to the west. You can see this, the streets are fairly wide. Um, there's the, the context is relatively far away. Commission members, any questions? Is the councilman in support of this? I, I am, and uh, I, you know, I think that there's a lot of um, 
you know, older medical buildings kind of of this era in town. So I, I, I hope that this is the beginning of a precedent to, to bring some new life to some of these buildings, which really they have kind of lower ceilings and aren't well suited for uh, kind of modern medical equipment. Um, I know a letter was submitted also by uh, the development corporation uh, in support. So with that, I will move approval uh, with the conditions uh, put forth by design review, which are in our packet. We have no issue with those. And I will second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Um, please take the roll. Downing. Yes. Curry. Yes. Trey Scott. Yes. Slife. Yes. Um, so thank you, motion carries. I agree with you, Councilman. Yeah, yeah. Um, nice to add a little density. So. Thank you uh, very much. Yep. Okay, thank next you. Project. Thank you. Uh, this is Southeast Design Review, uh, Entrada at Woodhill, Woodhill Heights Townhouse New Construction. Uh, this is at 2720 Martin Luther King Drive. Um, uh, Andrew, is there anyone else here to speak to? I need to swear you in. Is there someone to speak to this item? Oh, there you are. Okay. Hi, this is a head. To tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, as you shall answer to the penalty of perjury. I do. I and do. I do believe Andrew's on. He was just muted, I think. Yeah, I apologize for that. I just <laughs> wanted to uh, say thank you for having us this morning. So we have Danny Glimsher, uh, who's on our team um, from Glimsher Cabell Group, who will be speaking as well, okay. as, as well as Gary Neola from uh, Cornerstone Architecture. You uh, all, can I hear a ye uh, yes from all of you real quick? Yes. Yes. The other two, maybe. I think you got it, Rumi and Gary. Are you on? You might be muted. All right. Well, go ahead, and then we'll if they need to speak. Otherwise, you guys are in charge. So. Okay. Go ahead. <clears throat> So, uh, Entrada is, um, we're seeking to get approved 42, uh, unit townhouse project. Each unit is approximately 1950 gross square feet, uh, 2 story built in side by side configurations. Um, we tried to give the buildings a, a very high design, uh, look, but while honoring the architectural language that exists in the neighborhood, each unit is 3 bedrooms and 3 full bathrooms. Uh, one of the bedrooms and bathroom and full bathrooms is on the first floors, allowing residents to age in place and making them more accessible. Um, it's kind of an open floor plan in the living room with attractively furnished kitchens and living rooms and what have you, stainless steel appliances. Uh, all of these homes will be built to Cleveland Green Building uh, Standards. They're all net zero ready homes. And with the addition of an optional solar product, you can make these net zero homes. Uh, each home has a two car attached garage with a roof deck over the garage overlooking downtown Cleveland and a wraparound front porch, which helps integrate these, uh, with the neighborhood as well. If you'd like, um, this, this project is also supported by, um, councilman Griffin. And if you. I believe you have control of the slides, if you'd like, we have renderings here so you can see. Uh, around the 10, starting around slide 10. These are just, you know, uh, photos of the context and what's around it. Elevations, floor plans, and right there. Those are the renderings. Um, we've received a schematic design of approval from the local design re uh, review approval board. Um, with that schematic, they wanted us to investigate uh, the potential of uh, donation of trees and things from the Cleveland tree plan. And they have put us, uh, they've given us certain resources where we can uh, see if we can potentially afford more trees here. Um, we also, uh, the last uh, piece they wanted was these sidewalks, as you can see that go out to the street. We used pavers that were similar. We thought it was a nice design element. They wanted us to remove the spacing between those. So we've done that and they wanted to see the gutter and lighting plans, which we have been working on investigating as well. And they wanted us that separation wall in between the two units, 
that little fence. They wanted it to be more in the language of the existing architecture there. So we've taken those accent pieces uh, from the kind of front slash side of the house. And we're going to make that little separating fence out of those as well. Um, our, our primary focus here has been to provide extraordinary high quality at a low enough price that you know everybody who's existing in the neighborhood now can afford these. So we are looking to sell these in the low to mid 200s. Um, we have uh, also put very high quality products in there. There's no vinyl siding. These are uh, the siding of the homes will be LP smart side with 50 year warranties. These are uh, steel seam roofs, which also have 50 year warranties and uh, high durability ratings. Um, and so, you know, for instance, in a, a home like this, if someone were to qualify for like greater university circle living down payment assistance, somebody with that down payment could move into one of these homes for approximately 800 or so dollars a month, um, given that there's a tax abatement as well. So as I've said, it's been really strongly focused on affordability and quality, which has been certainly difficult in this, uh, in this market environment with rising prices everywhere. But so far we've been able to hold that line. And oh, before I forget one other thing they mentioned at uh, local design review board, under the little awnings over the front door on the porch, they wanted us to take out the little kind of copings underneath. So it's just more angular and speaks more to the, uh, kind of language of the roof. So in our next iteration, we will have that as well. Thank you, uh, commission members. Um, any comments? I'll start with a comment. Um, I think it's excellent, by the way. Um, I really wanna commend you. I think um, uh, this speaks to the possibilities that it is, it, it is, you are capable of building a high quality unit at affordable price with a really nice design that doesn't have to mimic kind of like a, kind of kitschy or historic architecture. So um, I think this sets a really nice precedent and I hope other people take a look at what you did, you did here across the city, um, honestly. So um, I wish you luck, but um, to my commission members, any other questions or comments? And I know this is for schematic approval. Correct. Yes, I have a question. Yeah. McCray Scott. Yep. How, how many square livable square feet is there within these units? So the total units about 1950, the garage is 400, um, approximately. So you also get, you know, 400 square foot rooftop, you know, kind of deck over, over the garage. But as far as internal living space, you're around 14, 1500. Just to add to that, Danny, um, one of the things that's really, really important about this um, project is we do have a, a, a first floor bedroom and full bath for people to age in place, which I think is unique for a product like this in Cleveland compared to a standard townhome where you would just walk up straight to a bedroom or, or a kitchen. Um, having that, that ability allows for people to age in place, which I think is really important. And this project is really trying to bridge the gap between um, the large neighborhood and, and the Woodland neighborhood. So um, it, it's a very important project to us as Key State as a mission and of course, Glimshire Capital Group. So uh, thank you. Yeah, Madam Chair, I have one uh, question and a comment actually. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to echo uh, what uh, Chairwoman Curry uh, alluded to uh, because it's very hard to hit that sweet spot. Uh, and there's always the excuse about the market and it being a weak market and you can't do it, you know, and I think that you guys nailed it. And I know in uh, some of the earlier discussions, I like the fact that you turned those units that were a long Brit oval, because I guess they were originally on their side. And I know uh, Mark Fields was very uh, adamant about wanting to make sure that the units were facing Brit oval because of that park space there. So I think that was a good move. So kudos to you guys for doing that. Um, the other thing is just the price points. I think the price points, you know, work really, you know, well, you know, in this particular, uh, you know, market. One question I do have um, with respect to the these ground level entries. Can you talk a little bit about that? Um, was there any consideration for having any type of like porch element or lifting the units a little bit? Yeah, I mean, we we did look at that. You know, there there's. Kind of both in the neighborhood that you know a lot of them are lifted but there's also some precedent of the slab on grade we just simply couldn't afford it and hit the price point uh, you know concrete is 
gone through the roof like everything else. Um, and to be honest with you, we loved the slab on grade notion for the accessibility. So we were very conscious of putting that, you know, third bedroom on the first floor so residents could stay there. So, or, you know, a grandparent could move in or a mom or something like that could be with a family. And we wanted to make it easy for them to access uh, their unit. And, and so that was really the thought process of that. So these can be generational homes. I mean, they're, they're built like tanks. So, I mean, they're <laughs> 10 and a half inch walls and things. So they, these should last a long, long time. And we wanted to make sure that the residents could be there as long as they wanted to. Well, kudos to you guys. Something about that. Awful. That was Freddie, which is that when we did the design competition for barrier free Cleveland for the new housing typologies, which was in old Brooklyn, one of the big ahas I had was that um, this idea that when people build accessible units, mm -hmm. um, they tend to not be beautiful, right? And so this to me strikes that, which is that you can't tell the difference between an accessible unit and a non-accessible unit. They're just all accessible, right? And yes. yeah, it's a just a new way of designing housing for all, right? So you don't have a few that are accessible and a few that aren't, or a few that have ramps and a few that don't, which put a stigma on particular units. And so I think this is actually the future of universal design, which yeah. is to make something beautiful that is accessible, but doesn't identify an accessible unit. And so I actually hope there's more of it. And and the, 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 the spirit of that competition was to say that, that there is beauty in that. And I think that's what you have, key state have been able to do, which is extraordinary. So thank you. Well, and thank, thank you very much for that thoughtful. comment. Thank you guys for being really thoughtful. You know, and I think a lot of, you know, development interests need to really pick apart those principles, you know, and, and start to apply them. And I think as a, you know, commission and as, as a staff, and I know we try to do this is, you know, when we have these, you know, ideas, you know, we're not here to try to just police, you know, we're here to, tr you know, translate those principles into something tangible. And I think you guys did that, you know, hence some of the comments that Chairwoman Curry made. And I, that's the role here. So just good job overall with this. Thank you very much. So commissioner members, any other questions or a motion? I move approval incorporating the design review comments. Second. We have a motion and a second. Can we call the roll? Downing. Yes. Curry. Yes. Ray Scott. Yes. Life. Yes. Um, motion carries. We'll look forward to seeing you for final approval uh, when you're ready. Uh, next item. Thank you. Thank you so you. much. We appreciate your time. Have a good holiday. Thank you. Uh, next item is Southeast Design Review, proposed demolition of a two and a half story structure seeking final approval. This is at 11414 Union Avenue. <coughs> um, is Stephen here to speak to this? Yes, Steve Billington from the Cuyahoga Land Bank. Um, I'm not sure. Do I need to swear Cuyahoga Land Bank in? Well, I will yeah, anyway, I think, just to be sure. I, I think, yeah, I think we would normally, yeah. But I, yeah. yeah. Um, do you, uh, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth is you shall ans answer to the penalty of perjury? I do. Okay, take it away. All right, we have a proposed demolition of a two and a half story residential structure. I think there is there a presentation available? All right, this is uh, located at 11414 Union Avenue in the um, Mount Pleasant neighborhood. Um, well, it's in the Mount Pleasant Design uh, Design Review District. Um, the property is a again a two two and a half story single family structure. Uh, it's located next to the gas station, Sunoco gas station. That's in a really kind of deplorable condition. Um, it, this is an aerial view, it kind of gives you a, a closer look as it relates to the gas station, a broader look as it sits in the neighborhood. You can go to the next slide, please. Um, this is kind of a, a series of pictures from from the neighborhood, kind of just showing where, where the from the property's perspective almost. Um, but there's there's kind of like a diesel gas pump directly next to this fence fenced area of this of the house. It's kind of um, really close to the 
to the property lines. Um, across the street, there's the Walgreens. Um, so it's it's really a it kind of one of the remaining houses in a in a what has become a more commercial district. Um, if you go to the next slide, please. This is a look at the house from the exterior pictures. Um, just showing signs of wear over over the years. Uh, there's a lot of trees and and brush that have kind of just gone un, unchecked. We actually since these pictures were taken, we've sent the crew through to kind of cut back and and trim the lawn and do other things. Um, but there is still trees in the fence line along with the commercial property. Uh, the next slide, please. This is a kind of a sampling of pictures of the interior it shows kind of uh, the, from the attic. You can see through the roof. There's water damage throughout. Um, it, it was full of debris and garbage. Uh, we've cleaned it out since then and the uh, asbestos survey to look at to, to determine the viability of rehab. Um, we don't we don't see it that it, this is a viable rehab. This is a picture of the basement. Um, more interior pictures uh, sees that shows that the utilities have been stripped. There's no HVAC otherwise. So our proposed site finish, it would be to demolish the property and plant grass in the short term. Uh, and we would be in a, attempting to deed the property back to the city of Cleveland for any future development possibilities. Is there a curb cut? Will you be removing it? Uh, the curb, we will not be. It's it's kind of um, the the apron is part of the city sidewalk, and what we just tend to do in those situations is, is leave them so as not to kind of disturb the sidewalk. But it is actually at the same time saying that this, the there is utility work being done. So with removal of the house, maybe the, maybe they would pour a sidewalk there when they replace the sidewalk. I, I don't know whose responsibility that would be. I guess we could we could try to coordinate with the utility company. So that is generally our presentation on this, and I really uh, open the uh, floor for questions if anyone has. Move approval. Downing. We have a motion. Second, anyone? Second. Second, Councilman Slight. Uh, call the roll. Downing. Yes. Hurry. Yes. Ray Scott. Yes. Slight. Yes. I think our preference would be to coordinate if you can, especially if there's a streetscape project going on, I would say, because, um, you know, if there is one, it might make sense, but I also don't want to make them do work that you might tear up later either. So, um, I, I think it's just yeah. worth a conversation to see what's reasonable. So I'm not going to require it, but because I don't know what the future development is, but, but it, it's worth noting to the. As if they really are doing sidewalk improvements there, that it might be worth it to to talk about. Yeah, it. I think it would be our preference as well. I think anything we can do to kind of prevent people from driving on sites. Yes. Support. So. Okay. So um, we'll leave it up to you to check on that. Yeah, and I was under the impression, Lillian, that a removal of um, aprons was a, re a requirement of the permit. It is. That's why I asked. But I mean. Uh, that's why I asked, but I think the question around the st streetscape improvements is one that was valid. So I don't know how you feel about it. Charles, do you have opinion? Well, I, 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 I agree with your with your position. Yeah. Um, so, okay. Well, if you could please just have a conversation about sure. that for us. Uh, and and if for some reason it makes sense to remove it, then if you guys could remove it, because it is a requirement when there is demos. Okay. Um, all right, next item. Uh, the next item, um, there's another, if we flip to the next slide, I suppose. Uh, this is a demolition of a two-story apartment building at uh, 12010 Union Avenue. Okay, go ahead. But yeah, um, again, Steve Billington from the Cuyahoga Land Bank. Uh, this is a, a, a apartment building located at 12010 uh, Union Avenue. And, um, 
it is this is a picture of the exterior of the property it's kind of been vacant for some time now um if you could switch switch to the next slide please this is the aerial view of the property it's kind of one of the remaining properties in this on this corner um there's a church to the to the east um and there's some other commercial buildings to the to the west uh, there's actually a number of churches, a church across the street as well. You'll see in the next slide. Um, if you could go to the next slide, please. Uh, this is kind of a look at the street from the perspective of the building uh, across the street and up the street, down the street. Um, it shows that there is some vacancy. Uh, these are the exterior conditions of the property. Um, you see wear and tear on the outside. The brick is actually in fairly decent condition, but the windows have been open. Um, the property's been vacant and abandoned for some time now. The interior conditions shows a lot of the water damage that has kind of commenced over the years. Um, and some of the some attempt at renovation was made, but I, I, it was abandoned at some point. This is the basement conditions. It looks the utilities have been stripped. Uh, we did look at this for a potential renovation, but it really, you know, with it, it's six units. Um, and it's just not a viable, economically viable for us to do. Um, so our proposal would be to tear to to demolish the structure, finish grade, install topsoil and grass. Uh, there's a there's a giant tree in the back that we're going to protect and maintain uh, to do our best to kind of to, uh, maintain the tree canopy in the neighborhood. That's that's our presentation. Commission members, any questions? I move approval. Oh, we have a motion. Do we have a okay. second? Um, I just have a question. Is the councilman aware and in favor of this? Uh, I'm not, you know, I, I'm not 100%. I haven't talked to them personally, um, but the, there was, you know, we went through the design review process and it was, um, it was approved by the design review committee. I, I really honestly don't know. This is a property that was on forfeiture and been vacant and exposed to uh, foreclosure sale for multiple times and there was no interest. Um, right. And, I mean, normally I would say I understand that, I, but when a structure isn't in horrible condition, um, I think it's worthwhile touching base with the council people because of, you know the relationship. I don't know, Charles, how you feel about it, but. But for a project for a building of, that's kind of in okay shape like this that has some value, even though I understand your point, I just think it's yeah. worth checking on those. The ones that are in terrible shape and falling down and they're you know clear, it's a different story for me. Yeah, I, and I and I just say I can't. I don't want to speak out of turn because I don't. We're we're not a small organization. We have forty people that work here. I'm not involved in the acquisition process, and those those kind of decisions are made. This is a property that was on for. Uh, forfeiture list and historically we didn't have funding for these types of demolitions we had limits that, so a lot of these properties have been kind of sitting and and, and wait till you know we had an ability to or someone had the ability to, to address them so i would say that i don't know 100 percent if the council members been been engaged i would say that we have a fairly good relationship with city council in general we we do a lot of side yard kind of um, projects where we deed the properties when they're done to the neighboring properties, and that requires council approval. But you know, so we do we do interact with the council members on a regular basis. I would just say I don't personally know Kim Steigerwald is our kind of manager of acquisitions, and I would guess that she's had you know, okay. you know properties well, I just like ask this going forward. If there is one that is of this type, that right. you know is not in. Sure collapse and it has some value and it's this kind of structure where you know the difference that it's worth a check so just as it's sure. going forward it is something you should do i can actually i can honestly obviously make that part of my presentation going forward. okay either way i mean frankly it's in, you know terrible condition i think your support of council is helpful to just show that it's you know it's kind of addressing problems in the neighborhood okay uh we have a motion and a second any other comments before we vote. Um, I, I would like to make a comment. I would suggest that um, that we add to the motion that 
uh, Mr. Billingsley get uh, Billington, I'm sorry, get um, some approval from the council person uh, in reference to demolition on this building because the brick on the outside is good. Someone did try to start to renovate the building and it may be a possibility that the council person may not be in agreement with this. So I would agree with you. Um, did you make the motion originally? I can't remember who made the oh, original yeah. motion. So we, I asked that who made the original motion, if they'd be willing to add that condition. It's basically a condition that you would talk to the councilman if there is agreement or councilwoman, you would come back to staff. You don't have to come back to us and just verify that and then you could move forward or not. So I think I made the original motion and I'm fine with adding that to it. Okay, so we have a motion in, I think, Charles, if you did the second, are you okay with that? Yes. Yeah. Okay, uh, call the roll. Downing. Yes. Luke, oh, I'm sorry, Curry. Yes. Ray Scott. Yes. It's life. Yes. Okay, motion carries. Thank Next you. item. Thank you. Um, this is near West design review, uh, 2021 30. It's a 12 unit apartment building, new construction on Fulton road. Uh, Wesley, are you here? The only 1 to speak to this. Yeah, good morning. Okay. Uh, do you swear to tell the whole truth? Uh, nothing but the truth is you shall answer to the penalty of perjury. I do. Yes. Uh, James Simis from the uh, development team uh, is here as well. Okay. Uh, can I hear a yes from them as well? Yes, good morning. Okay. Go ahead. All right, thanks for having us. Um, so, uh, as mentioned, we're proposing a 12 unit apartment structure on Fulton Road. Uh, we are south of Lorraine um, uh, and basically at the uh, cross street uh, of roughly Hancock and Horace Court uh, in Ohio City. Next. Um, so this project has went before the block club. Um, it was also in front of near West, uh, this week or last week. I can't remember. Um, uh, and we, uh, have been presenting, uh, on a schematic level to this point. Um, you know, the zoning is two family in this area. Um, but we are, uh, getting support uh, along the way here for this kind of density. And I, I think it's reflective of. Uh, the architecture itself fitting well into the, uh, the neighborhood. And so, uh, we're going to present that to you today for a schematic review. Uh, and then, uh, in the following months, uh, come back with a much more detailed set of, uh, renderings and plans and things like that. Um, so here, uh, you know, uh, kind of going through the context photos here, we're on the west side of Fulton. Uh, so there will be a, a fair amount of uh, morning sun on the. East facade, and so here you see the um, the homes that are to the, directly to the south of us. Uh, the property in question is to the right, which has uh, got some trees and an existing house in the back. Um, you can see the homes to the south are uh, relatively recent additions uh, to the neighborhood, and uh, kind of uh, reflect the scale of, of what we're proposing as well. Next, so here we have the site plan. Um, we have, uh, a 70 foot wide parcel along Fulton that goes back 105 feet towards Japan court to the West and then Siam court, uh, kind of T bones into Japan. Uh, the structure that we're proposing is uh, just under 8,500 total square feet. And so, um, in order to, uh, kind of reflect some of the surrounding context. And we wanted to break up the, the front facade into a series of elements that reflect the scale um, of the neighborhood. And then uh, the setbacks on the houses to the north of us kind of uh, go back and forth a bit as it, it marches north on Fulton. So we wanted to, to play with that uh, orientation as well and, and how the front facade relates to the Fulton uh, property line. So, uh, for each of the 1st floor units, we have, um, uh, front porches, 
that will be large enough to be usable. Um, facing Fulton, again, we want to you know, add to the pedestrian activity here and allow for um, you know, some habitable space outside. Uh, these first floor units uh, would also be ADA accessible. Uh, we can see uh, just to the, uh, if you look at the bottom right corner of our property in question, uh, we've got a ramp that leads up to those two porches and then uh, for the northern units, there's another ramp that leads up, but those would be kind of hidden by uh, vegetation, uh, but still clearly usable. Um, the 12 units that we're proposing here are uh, just under, uh, basically within five to 600 total square feet. Um, and so uh, in a little bit, I think I'll have James explain, you know, the, the price point that we're looking at and, and the mix that we're looking uh, to execute here. Um, in the rear of the property, we have a handful of parking spaces, um, one of which would be uh, ADA accessible, and then uh, a walkway that leads to the uh, to two stairways that lead up to the upper units. So the first floor units would be accessed from Fulton, and then the uh, upper units would be accessed from the rear. And if people are parking, uh, in the back that have first floor units, we have a walkway that leads uh, to the front along the uh, southern side of the property. Uh, the setbacks we're looking at are five feet on either side, uh, the north and south, and then the front yard setbacks would be uh, uh, basically the average setback of uh, the structures around us. Next. Uh, so here is the first floor plan. There are four units uh, on each floor. And so you can see to the right, we have the entries to the units um, on the Fulton side. The living rooms would be there. So in terms of eyes on the street and kind of the active uh, spaces, you know, that's typically what you want to see on the, the front of the residential units. Kitchen in the middle and then bedroom towards the rear. Uh, as I mentioned, there are stairways up to the upper levels. Uh, and that's what you see here. Uh, towards the rear of the structure. Next. Second and third floor plans, very similar to the first floor. Uh, those living rooms, again, facing Fulton, and then uh, the stairs just kind of lead straight up uh, as they ascend. Next. So here we have uh, a very simple uh, context elevation of the western side of Fulton. And you can see that um, you know, I, I think we're fitting in relatively well to the, the scale and height of the uh, surrounding context. You know, to the north, we have a fairly large double. Um, and then to our south, we have the, the newer structures and the addition to an existing house directly to the south. Uh, and, and as I mentioned, we wanted to uh, really define each uh, element uh, as, it's, as it pulls back and forth relative to Fulton. And so uh, we feel like the, the gable roof, um, instead of doing a two gables or a flat roof, uh, we think that this breaks up the, the scale of this horizontally and vertically. Next. Here is uh, a rendered fa uh, facade study here of that east elevation. Uh, and so we're looking to, to do a mix of uh, green hues, um, you know, that. That color decision could change, but we are again looking to define each element uh, and make it, um, you know, stand on its own in many ways. Uh, since these middle units don't have windows on the side, we really wanted to to get as much glazing on this front facade as possible, um, and then the, uh, the side units would have uh, glazing down the uh, the north and south facades. Um, at each entry that you can see here. Uh, on the first level, we have a uh, canopy that defines each of those entrances um, and, of course, uh, you know, provides some coverage for uh, rain or snow. Uh, the porches themselves, uh, we do have uh, kind of railings at each one of them. It's not for uh, building code reason. It's really there just to, to really define that space as, you know, semi-private space for, for the residents. Next. Uh, here's the south side, south elevation. Um, on the first floor, we're going to have a ship lap vertically oriented uh, lap side lap uh, 
cement board. Uh, and then the upper two levels would be horizontally lapped. Um, so we wanted to, again, define the first floor and then uh, the upper levels above. Next. Uh, here's the west elevation. Uh, we would not be seeking any sort of height variance here. We are within the, uh, the zoning guidelines as, as they currently stand. Next. Next. And so uh, here's just a very simple material palette. Again, the uh, lapped cement board. Um, uh, there's some areas of metal panel, handrails, smooth finished concrete, and then black fiberglass windows and some facade lighting. Um, I'm not sure if there's anything else after this. Uh, next. Uh, what's the, this is for um, schematic approval or final approval. What was this? Schematic. For? schematic. Correct. What, were there any comments, relevant comments you want to mention from design review or, or was it approved as presented? Yeah, the, the, for design review, they asked that we add um, some larger trees into the planting areas in front of the porches to provide shade. Um, which we thought was a really good idea, and then uh, some sort of bike infrastructure, uh, you know, bike racks in the rear of the property, and that was really it. Okay. Uh, commission members, any questions or comments? Madam Chair. Move approval. Madam Chair. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Looks like we have uh, Director Collier with his hand raised. Okay, let's get the second first. Did I'll we... second. Okay, the second. Um, uh, any more conversation, Director Collier? Real quick, I um, just want to mention this because uh, on that, even on that last case, you know, with the uh, focus on universal design, which is great, and you know, having the uh, accessibility. Um, and I know we are focusing on exterior, but uh, I think it will be helpful to include um, in your package as this goes through design review. Because this is three stories, you know, how the internal space universal design is not just about the exterior, but it is about the interior. So just thinking about that internal space and how that internal space uh, accommodates, um, you know, one who, you know, may need, you know, uh, certain uh, special needs internally. Right? So it's 1 thing to have the, the ramps and things on the outside, but just think about internally how the space works. You know, for someone, if they were in a uh, uh, compromised condition. Absolutely. Thank you. We had a motion and a second. Can we call the roll? Downing. Yes. Hurry. Yes. Ray Scott. Yes. Life. Yes. No. Motion carries the schematic approval and thank you. Um, it's a wonderful project. You've been doing great stuff, Wesley. So thank you. Thanks. Have a nice day. Thank you. <laughs> uh, this is the near West uh, design review. Um, Clark recreation center seeking final approval. Um, and this is Gavin from city architecture. Anyone else speaking to this? Yeah, hello. Uh, we also have Mark do uh, the architect from the city on the line. He's going to. Do the quick walkthrough of the project for us. I don't need to swear I'm in, but I do need to swear you in. So, uh, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth as you shall answer to the penalty of perjury? I do. Okay, go ahead. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, this is for the renovations and additions to the Clark Recreation Center, Clark Avenue, 5706 in the Clark Fulton neighborhood. Um, this is one of our historic bathhouses, former bathhouses, um, part of the roots of both our recreation center program and Department of Public Health, because they used to contain clinics. Um, we can just go quickly through the existing context slides. This is where the location is. It's on the westerly edge of uh, Clark Avenue before you get to 65th. It's a very dense, vibrant, and vital neighborhood, if you're all familiar with it. There's the U-Haul there up at the corner on Clark. Um, the other good news that some of you may be aware of is that um, we had a we, we successfully garnered a grant um, for creating a new park to the west of this building. So um, this design uh, anticipated that, um, and 
responds to uh, that future park where the existing parking lot is. That's just the streetscape buildings from 1908. It's our oldest uh, bathhouse and actually our oldest uh, extant rec center. It uh, had additions over the years. Um, particularly, there was the uh, small pool and locker room addition in the front that was sometime in the uh, 1930s. So, but the original building is the gold brick colored with the big overhanging brackets and the uh, the gym gymnasium in the background. There's an existing parking lot that again will be the park and we will be utilizing train court um, in the back of the building for access to new parking along train court. This is mostly a walk to center. It's very heavily used by a lot of the seniors and kids in the neighborhood and uh, train court to the north um, is a very when school lets out at Clark Elementary large groups of kids come over to the center utilizing train court and walking that way. So our design is also responding to that. Please, uh, next slides, please. That shows the site plan and the property that's involved. Again, the properties to the west will be part of the new park, but that's basically the existing footprint. Next slide, please. And this shows the site plan with the current parking lot, and it shows the existing rec center and some small additions. Um, one of the goals for most of our projects is to provide full accessibility, especially where there's a lot of seniors using these. So. Um, there will be an elevator in the building. The current building is a split level design. And um, what we're doing is um, through some floor demolition and some rationalization of the circulation, we are um, creating a fully accessible facility with a fully accessible entrance on the street. Next slide, please. Uh, these are just some of the landscaping elements we're using at a small landscaped area along Clark as well as a small landscaped area. Next slide, please, to the uh, to the back of the property over by the, uh, the northwest corner. Next slide, please. These are the light fixtures we're putting along the street next to the entrances, the bikes uh, racks, and our uh, standard um, city of Cleveland uh, rec center and park sign. In addition, we have a large uh, Clark sign that is uh, uh, made of metal and has the large letters and stands in front of the, uh, the en new entry vestibule. Next slide. Uh, this just shows quickly the plans down in the basement. There's art space and fitness space and a resource center. Uh, next slide, please. And this just shows the various program elements. It's got a swimming pool to which we're um, opening up with garage doors on the west to a new patio that's used for break times uh, during the pool, we're adding a new pool office and a new gym office, really basically making sure that we have all the staffing uh, programming accommodated in this, and there's the existing gym. But we're reconfiguring it with the blue circulation and creating new locker rooms that per code actually feed directly into the existing uh, swimming pool. Next slide, please. Um, there's a little mezzanine, which we're providing a second means of egress for um, that overlooks the gym and is actually pretty heavily used because it's such a small gym. Next, please. That just shows the roof plan. Um, this is the presentation we gave to Neighborhood Design Review, um, which, uh, as you probably know, approved uh, as presented. Um, and these are just some 3D images showing how, if you can imagine where the parking lot is and where the existing print shop building that is um, going to be removed. Um, that will be a new park with a row of parking along train court there to the north. So the idea here was along the streetscape uh, to kind of continue with the additions and the collage spirit of how this building was done in the past. We're adding the new entry vestibule. We're adding, turning one of the former entrances because all these always, all these bathhouses had two entrances because uh, they were machines for gender segregation. But we're creating a new entry there on the front. But this addition to the west is really just like a blue wall with varying heights that separates that patio that needs to be secure for that. But it's also intended to open up the pool and visually create a kind of a new front uh, with uh, some color. It's a blue glazed brick that we like to use in all of our rec projects. It's our rec blue um, that will be facing the new park, which will be going through its own separate um, design process and uh, community engagement process. Next slide. 
that's just showing the elevations and how the existing and the new with the new blast vestibule it's kind of a vitrine to feature the um, existing pedimented neoclassical entry that was actually added when they built the pool so we're sort of featuring that but also creating a vestibule for energy and creating a more welcoming presence with doors that approach from both the east and the west this is cutting the new garage doors that can be opened up in the good weather um, to create a much more indoor outdoor feel and make the pool a much nicer uh, a much nicer amenity for the neighbors so that especially in the summertime it can function more like an outdoor pool as well this shows the elements along the street with that glass vitrine the low blue walls and there's that um, new little terrace wall for the former men's entrance that comes out and that just shows a, a color rendering of how the uh, west elevation facing the uh, future park will work next slide please uh, this shows our palette of materials. We are replacing the roof with the uh, synthetic um, play tile system, uh, which gets us a lovely warranty and uh, actually looks very good. Um, and there's the, the different colors of the brick, our standard recreation buff and our recreation blue um, aluminum panels and storefront and then precast coatings. Next slide, please. Uh, that just shows how we're restoring masonry. And there's the view along the street with that new glassy vestibule and the signage and the balcony. And that shows how the view from the Southwest works. This is our little pool terrace and the pool office. So we get more, uh, more staff eyes on both the pool terrace as well as on the street. That's the pool office looking on the street. So we're very excited about this project and ready to go out to bid. Yeah, thank you. Director Collier has his hand raised. Uh, okay, uh, Director Collier. Uh, yeah, just real quick, um, you know, great job. Uh, obviously this building has been there for some time and the, the uh, restoration and tasteful additions are, are great. And, you know, I love the uh, Clark uh, lettering uh, on the front. Um, one question about the um, play spaces um, or small children. That's so important, uh, particularly in a community like this, where you have a lot of you know moms with small kids. Is that anticipated just to be in the park section when that uh, process goes through to have the uh, play spaces out there? Yes, that's the anticipated. There's um, the with the addition of the uh, land uh, to the west. There's opportunity for a variety of scale of spaces and the. Uh, um, site development crew, uh, Jim and Mike and Mike here in our shop is working on uh, a lot of really exciting uh, conceptual ideas for how um, we can accommodate play for all ages. And um, as I said, there's a lot of seniors in this neighborhood. And, uh, yeah. um, so those spaces will be primarily within the park space itself. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, commission members, any other questions or comments? I'll move approval. Oh, we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. A uh, motion and a second. I will say I, I think the operable um, kind of garage door type glass from the pool to the pool deck is extraordinary and innovative and super, super amenity that I think we need more of in the city that really attracts people because it's a true attraction. It's very cool. So thank you. Um, and, um, and I think we can just take the roll. Downing. Yes. Murray. Yes. Gray Scott. Yes. Slife. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Great. Project. Thank you. Happy Labor Day, everyone. You too. You too. Thank you. Um, I think we have a couple more uh, downtown flats design review. Uh, this is 55 public square and West 3rd street. This is final approval for 55 public square. Uh, Craig Brown, anyone else speaking to this? We have uh, 3 other people in the room. Doug price, the 4th, uh, Tim Reed and Brad Cochran. Although probably I'll do most of the talking. Doug might do a little. Okay, so I'll swear y'all in. Um, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth as you shall answer to the penalty of perjury? I do. I do. Okay. I do. I do. 
There you go. Welcome. All right, you got the floor. Thanks. We got the floor. Okay. Well, uh, this is a new building that was purchased by uh, a new project that's purchased by the K and D group. Uh, we're kind of the north uh, west corner of Public Square. It's uh, where the old John Q Steakhouse used to be. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how many stories, but K and D intends to do. About 50% commercial, 50% residential, and return the restaurant. Uh, it's it's been rented out to uh, Rockaway on a fair Fahrenheit. So we're pretty excited about that. Uh, next slide. I'll go through these pretty quickly. Okay, these are actually not photographs. These are laser images that I I put in. Uh, gives you a little bit of a view of the, the plaza in the front, it's wide open, not much there, um, pretty unattractive. Um, you can see on the right, kind of a streetscape level. And the, the bottom picture in the middle um, shows what you're going to see shortly is a connection to Public Square. Next slide. If you were walking from Public Square, the center of Public Square, walking to the northwest, the uh, long leg there of that sidewalk uh, connects visually directly to uh, our main entrance. So that's one of the, the things we wanted to uh, tie into. Next slide. So these are part of our concept is connecting to that sidewalk at Public Square, and then highlighting the three major entrances. The large circle in the middle is the main connection to the building with a large canopy that will stay. Over to the right is the entrance, pretty nondescript at the moment, to uh, the bank, the First National Bank so that's going to stay. Um, over to the left is where we intend to put the Entrance to the restaurant, very close to where the old John Q's used to be. There is one other entrance here. It's the kind of circular revolving door to the uh, top left here of this plaza. That's going to be kept open and used for uh, residences as a kind of a private entrance for them. Next slide. Uh, Quick demolition, uh, the main thing here to see is that we're removing all the pavement. Most of this project is on k and property, but we are removing all the pavement uh, in the front of the plaza, uh, all the way up to the uh, curb, which we are going to raise. And then along West 3rd Street, we will keep the curb in place and remove everything, the entire sidewalk, all the way up to the end of k and uh, property there. The two kind of important things to see here are the, the two little bump outs uh, that were on the John Q Steakhouse are going to be removed. Uh, next slide, please. This gives you a, a, an idea of our site plan. Um, you can see the main entrance in the front with that angle that picks up the walkway from Public Square into the main part of the building. The other two entrances, uh, the bank to the right and the restaurant to the left. Um, we'll show it a little bit later here, but we have a series of planters in the front, kind of long linear planters. Uh, I think there's five of them for one tree each, one for two trees, one for three. And then in front of the restaurant, we have kind of a, I won't say a serpentine wall, but it's kind of a, a, a wall that, um, moves in and out a little bit with the same pattern here. Um, and there'll be a planter there with two large trees. We have kind of a dark gray um, paver that runs around as the border, which I'll show you those in a little bit, uh, all the way around the property. And it will go down West 3rd Street. We have a lighter paver or a different color paver in the middle uh, of these entranceways that will mimic what we see in Public Square, and then we have a kind of a red band uh, that works its way through there on a grid pattern. Uh, we picked that 
at least that's in the plaza on the West Third Street. We've picked that up, that red color, uh, in some permeable uh, sidewalk features there. So, which we've gone, we've walked walked the site with uh, John Peckick from Sidewalk Commission, uh, Sidewalk Department. I've spoken to Tom Boyer uh, from Engineering and with uh, Jennifer Kipp the city arborist and uh, everybody seems happy with this. So next slide, please. That's just a, uh, obviously a color rendering of this. Next slide. Okay, here's, here's the column sustainable planters. If you look at the typical drainage planter on the top, what we're doing is leaving one side of the planter open that will accept uh, runoff from the plaza and take it into the planter. There'll be, uh, a, these, are, these are low planters, probably only about three inches high. Well, they are, so three inches high and nine inches wide. And uh, we, we allow the storm drains to work their way in. Uh, we also have around these, we have a cable railing system that we're going to use. If you look over the black square rail to the left, that image, that's the, the top rail is primarily used in the restaurant area. And the other uh, parts of it were uh, to keep, keep uh, dogs out and for the better, lack of a better term, protect our plant material. We'll have lights in each one and irrigation heads. So we're trying to protect those uh, in the future. Next slide. Landscape plan, we made a couple changes or a change uh, uh, after my discussion with uh, Jennifer and we ended up uh, using some of her comments uh, that were on, on uh, West Third Street where you see the, the red permeable paver uh, that will basically connect the two planters there um, with an underground uh, area. So we can have a, a, a large area planting mix, which she was pretty excited by. And in the front, we have a mix of uh, street trees, mostly lindens, and then we have uh, smaller ornamental trees uh, along West uh, Third Street. We'll get rid of the honey locusts that were in bad locations and not doing all that well and switching them to lindens where we think they'll do better uh, once we protect the uh, plant beds a little bit and irrigate them. Next slide. <clears throat> Pavers, uh, the, the top picture on the left is once again that paving pattern from the walk on public square. We will not be using the same color, but we're going to attempt to uh, use that same pattern and the color chip is there uh, from uh, Gofield concrete uh, colors. The banding, these, there's a, a bigger difference in these grays than it shows up here on the screen, at least our screen. Uh, but the banding will be the color chip in the middle and then obviously the red grid pattern to the right. Next slide. Light fixtures were basically putting all new light fixtures in the front of the, the building. Um, going to, uh, if, you see, if you look at the plan, the four large circles, and these are not to scale, it's just so you can see it graphically. The four large circles are 18 foot high pedestrian lights. There's a, the, the luminaire is on the right, kind of circled what we're gonna use. And it, the light fixture circled in the middle section, those, those will either be 18 foot high or if you look at the smaller ones, the rest of the ones we're showing uh, other than those four are 12 foot high pedestrian lights. The image to the far left is an eight foot high bollard with about two foot high uh, light wand at the top, kind of looks like a little torch. We're going to have, uh, what do we have? I think we have seven of those around the, the dining area. Uh, we also have a, a light 
uh, on every tree uh, shining up out of the planters. And we have we have a little few steps here, which I'll explain, I think, on the next slide. Or, um, but we, we, have, uh, we have two steps and uh, we have um, light fixtures on the steps also. Okay, so this is kind of explaining the restaurant. Uh, it's about a thousand square feet of, of actual outdoor dining. And whenever uh, they bring the building in for presentation, there'll be also a rooftop uh, garden on the old uh, John Q's structure as well. So there'll be two outdoor dining areas. Uh, if you look right in the, the top uh, plan, you look at the rectilinear paving pattern here, uh, or the entry pattern, that's the, the two small steps. There's the doorways right at the corner of the building, and there's a 10 to 12 inch difference in grade from the sidewalk. And you can actually go out and see it if you would walk the street, you can see where the, the floor elevation is substantially higher. So we had to put a couple steps in here. But what we did do is we left an accessible route that will come from the main plaza. If you if you decided you wanted to walk on grade, you could go to the right and you'll see it better on a, one of the renderings. There's a walkway coming between the dining area and the steps, which is the width of the double doors coming in the building. Uh, we felt there's plenty of room in here for people to congregate at the entrance uh, and that's some of the changes we made after talking with the planning department. You look down at the sketch at the bottom, um, that basically highlights a little bit more of uh, the, the, where the doorway is and the stairway, and you can see the dimensions on the accessible route or the on-grade route, seven or eight feet. We're using two big urns that will set on either side of the stairs with obviously floral uh, plants in them, um, as well as the, as well as the uh, planters with the, the street trees. The one, the one planter is uh, connected to the dining area. And then around the, around the left, uh, we've got that kind of zigzag wall that uh, will be planted with uh, several larger trees and some understory stuff. Most of these planters will be about half uh, perennials and ground covers and half left for candy to do uh, annual annual plantings in. Next slide. The rest of these are just renderings. Obviously, it's from the, the front of the building. We are, the building itself, when the restaurant comes in, um, is going to, the facade's all gonna change, and it's gonna be a lot of black and white, which is why we've used the gray and the black uh, or dark gray features that we've used, light fixtures and cable rail system. Next slide. That gives you an idea of the, the front entrance there. Those pots are gonna be a little bigger on either side of the stairway, but uh, you can see that there's quite a bit of room in a double, double doorway there. You can see the dining area beyond and the uh, on-grade walkway. Next, the next slide will show that on-grade walkway better gives you a feel coming from the front entrance and uh, going right into the uh, restaurant. The way the restaurant's gonna be handled here is that people will go directly into the restaurant and then they will come out a set of four doors, double doors, uh, double two double doors, so that the control of the restaurant will be, the outdoor dining will be from inside and we will have an emergency man gate uh, at the far end there. There's one more slide here. Next slide. Gives you just a little bit of, of an idea of that corner. Um, so next slide, we'll say we're at the end. Uh, thank you. Um, so um, commission members, any questions? And I think you said this, but Eventually, the restaurant will, renovation will come back later. This is happening first, correct? Correct. 
Okay. Yeah, it's just the plaza and the lighting. Director oh. Collier, as his hand raised. Okay. Uh, Director Collier. Yes, ma'am. Real quick. Um, this is uh, obviously important as it relates to how this speaks to Sharon Williams. So uh, I'm going to uh, suggest, because uh, I'm not sure that that conversation has happened, um, with speaking to the Sharon Williams team and your team. Um, West Third is going to be a critical uh, facade because the goal is to obviously activate that, given the uh, Sharon Williams HQ is going to sit on West Third, and the garage facility is going to be uh, north of that with some ground floor retail. The other thing is with the um, uh, smaller uh, structure that Sharon Williams is proposing closer to Shaker Square, it will literally face off with this particular facade in this plaza. And I was wondering, um, uh, Madam Chair, you know, this street, given the fact that it's so short, um, we need to really start rethinking how we can um, rethink these smaller streets like this. Uh, even if it's with decorative uh, paving, where you can have sort of this plaza feel, even though it's a through street, but really starting to rethink how we can have these short streets kind of serve as kind of flexible spaces, particularly when you have uh, use like a restaurant, a plaza, and even a condition uh, like you have with Cheryl Williams. Um, I think that this stretch of street can be really rethought um, so I want to just put that out there. So uh, if there can be a conversation with the Sharon Williams folks and also some dialogue about this stretch of street here um, coming from Shaker Square on the West Third and how that street plane can be treated differently, uh, even if it's a different paving treatment, it can really start to feel like a, uh, a flexible, flexible straight street for cars and, you know, pedestrians and uh, cyclists. Okay. Commission members, any other comments or questions? So, is Director Collier asking us to table this? I'm no, no. Clear. I'm just, uh, oh. Suggesting. I think, yeah, I think the staff should be doing some coordination. Um, I think there's room for that because the building renovation is not quite ready yet. So, I think he's just suggesting that they start to collaborate. Um, but I think that's really the responsibility of staff to convene that. We're certainly happy to talk to them. There's there's been communication between you know us at KD and Sherman Williams already. There's we've had meetings prior to this with them. And we're we're in communication with them on on coordinating both sides of the street. Good. Um, any other comments or questions from commission members for a motion? I'll move approval with uh, the caveat that staff work with the uh, developers and designers on this project and Sherwin Williams in a continuing conversation and dialogue. Do I have a second? I'll second. The second, um, so we'll take the motion. I'll say before the motion that um, um, it's really huge improvement and exciting and uh, starting to signal the, I think some of the things that we always hoped that both public square and even Sherwin Williams would do, which would be to start to bring back street life. So uh, I thank you all and uh, excited about the restaurant and the outdoor cafe. Um, and I think outdoor cafes on squares like this are extremely important. And I don't think, I, I think it's the kind of retail we need more of. Um, so you guys are doing it and doing it first. So thank you. So we can take, we can take the roll. Downing. Yes. Curry. Yes. Ray Scott. Yes. Slife. Yes. Uh, motion carries. Um, I don't think we have anything else unless Freddie has something to talk about before we adjourn. Uh, just well, a couple of items I want to mention. Um, we're going to be putting together a summary of the census data uh, to present to planning commission. Uh, obviously, the census numbers uh, are out um, and there's some surprises 
um, and we want to make sure that we get an opportunity to provide information to the commission in the form of maps. Um, and we want to do a presentation, so that's going to be coming up. The other thing is uh, form based zoning. The uh, draft code uh, we want to present to the planning commission obviously would have to go through law. So we're not done uh, with the legal side of that, which is really going to be an interesting process, but uh, do want to uh, present the actual draft code for the 3 areas to the planning commission. And then, uh, lastly, uh, really quick. There is uh, uh, several plan adoptions that are coming up that I've alluded to in previous meetings. Um, so uh, expect to have those uh, as special meetings that are going to be coming up uh, in addition to our regularly scheduled meetings. So those are the only three Thank items you. I have today. Thank you very much, Freddie. I'd like the record to reflect that this meeting ended at 11 a.m. Um, to please put that in the minutes. So thank you. <laughs> Meeting adjourned. <laughs> Goodbye. Guys, <laughs> you.